Hey travelers, I am here outside Hagrid the bus. This is our 2003 Chevy 3500 and I bought this bus almost a year and a half ago and have not done a ton with it. We've done a few short camping trips. We have gone within two to three hours of our house. I've been intimidated, I would say, to drive it farther than that. Not because anything's wrong with it, just because I'm not confident in my abilities with it and it's much different than driving a car. It's bigger, it's heavier, it does not have any cruise control or anything like that. So one of my goals for the second half of 2024 here is to decide what I wanna do with this bus and I'm kind of split between two options. Every time I'm in it, I love the bus and want to use it more. And then when I'm not and it's parked here in my driveway, I just don't make the plans. So I think one of the things is that it's, you know, it's, it's a 20 year old bus. And if something were to happen while we were out and it broke down, what would I do? Um, so I'm a little intimidated about that. I've had it checked over by mechanics. There's nothing wrong with it, <laughs> perfectly fine. Um, but it's just one of those insecurities about traveling and not having someone knowledgeable about mechanics there. If my husband was traveling with us, then, you know, we'd wing it and he'd probably be able to put it back together on the road. But he's home and I would be taking it out. So option number one, do I sell the bus? I don't really want to because every single time that I've bought a camper and then said, oh, I'm not using it enough, let me sell it. I've regretted it and bought something else that we could use to go camping. And I really do love the camping lifestyle, going out, connecting, and you know, unplugging and being in nature and having that one-on-one -on -one time where it's not a trip where we're running all around all over the place, we're stationary. It's not Disney where we are doing something every second of the day and have all the stimulation. We actually get to unwind and connect and I think it's it's just a great mother-daughter option for us. We would just like to use it more to make it make sense to have it. Okay, option number two, plan an epic road trip. I feel like I've been straddling the middle ground of doing the safe thing, just camping semi near our house. So we've done like South Carolina, Georgia, and that's about as far as we've gone with the bus. But if I'm going to decide if I want to keep it or sell it anyway, should I just plan a cross country road trip, push the bus to its limits, push myself to my limits probably, and see what it can do. And if it breaks down, like on the West Coast, I don't know, sell it from there. I've been looking at the calendar and seeing if there's a time that we have like an open month or two to just take our time, wander across the United States, see a lot of the Midwest and West Coast that I have never been to, um, check out some of the epic national parks that are out in that area. So stay tuned for more on that. If you wanna see what I end up deciding, go ahead and subscribe. I'm sure I'll, I'll post an update here, but I haven't really spent much time in the bus since we went camping about a month ago and it needs to be cleaned up. It needs to be um, organized. And I figured what better time than to give you a tour than when I am cleaning and organizing it and I can show you what it looks like. So enjoy this little mashup of a video of me thinking out my thoughts and cleaning the bus and I'll show you around Hagrid the bus and all he has to offer. All right let's start with the coolest feature of the bus which I don't know in my opinion it's set up like a bus a school bus so it's got the full-on school bus doors. I contemplated taking these out and honestly it's it's the thing everybody loves about them so <laughs> we're leaving it in. It's super fun and you literally just open them up like that. There is a fan here that we can turn on. This is where I have this uh, the phone holder set up for GPS because there's no CarPlay in this bus. At this stage, the fan blows, the air conditioning does not work, the heat works fine. I, I wish this was like a big school bus driver steering wheel, but that's, that's the front. Pretty basic front end, really no changes have been made here. Uh, it came with this little mini fridge that plugs into a cigarette lighter that I've never really used. Here's the bed all made up. 
If you can't tell, I love for throw pillows. My husband hates them. So we don't have many decorative pillows in the house, but I figured I was gonna go crazy with them on the bus. This is a full queen size bed. And this is what made me get a bus versus a van. We looked at vans as well, but they were not as spacious width wise. I'm six feet tall. So it would have been really hard to fit a full bed that I could stretch out in all the way into a van. So we went with a bus. I'm not sure what to do with this area, but it has this like, foot of kind of wasted space at the end of the bed. If you have any thoughts on what would make sense to put in here, I usually just end up stuffing the pillows and blankets that we're not using down there. There's two comforters on this bed because there is, I'll show you a second bed in the bus that my daughter sleeps on. And it seems like on a bus or a van or an RV, space is a premium. And so it seems kind of wasted to have that, like, I don't know, five feet by one foot Space with nothing in it unless we just keep it as storage maybe we can put a skinny cabinet in or something like that but it just seems wasted right now so if you have thoughts drop them in the comments we'd love to hear I am new to all of this so open for suggestions on this one let me show you what we changed in the bus and what was here when we got it so the bed was already in I would say this was like 75% done when we got it the family that we got it from was using it as a camper and I basically just kind of did some of the like aesthetic making it pretty stuff. So the bed was in the kitchen cabinet sink area was already in and this converted um, bench seat slash bed was in here already. And when I got the bus, I was very early days of recovering from my stem cell transplant and kind of used this as a project to sort of feel like I had something to do. So I couldn't do much heavy lifting, but I was able to do some fun projects and I took this kitchen cabinet area that was super plain. I just switched out the hardware. I went and put this peel and stick wallpaper on, which might be my favorite thing that I did. I love how it came out. I love how it brightens things up. And then we made some flower garlands. We tried out a few different iterations. Command hooks completely melted off on our first camping trip. So they're up there with uh, more permanent hooks now, but I just wanted to decorate these upper cabinet shelf areas that were already here. Um, and I did a lot of painting. This was all dark gray and black interior. So we painted um, the walls, the ceiling, um, I would love to do something a little different with the ceiling because it's got some like glue and markings and stuff that the paint didn't necessarily cover, but the next big project would probably be heating and cooling if we were going to keep this. And I've thought about putting like a mini split system in the back here where this big non-functioning air conditioner is, but that's a bigger project than I can personally take on myself right now. So I have to decide if it's something I want to put the money into doing. And then we've got sink faucet. I just, we did a quick upgrade on that. And then countertop space was something that I wanted to get a little bit more of in case we were stuck in here in the rain or cooking or something like that. So we've got a little bit of countertop space next to the sink. And then we've gone ahead and this used to be a full wall for some reason behind the driver's seat. I don't know what the function was or if it was just to give privacy when the driver was driving and, and kind of separate the two areas of the bus, but we took it down to a half wall and opened it up a little bit and added a countertop to it. So that's a good place to put stuff. We are also usually doing some type of homeschool on the bus. So having somewhere to put a, a laptop or a book or something like that is important. And then we saw this somewhere else when I was watching videos of small small RV living and bus living and stuff like that and made a little countertop here. So I really love how this folds away, clicks out, it's pretty stable, it doesn't rattle when I'm driving. What we've done so far for refrigeration is just to bring our like big Yeti cooler and stick it in the front and kind of just fill it with ice and whatever food. But again, we've only done short trips. So longer term, I don't really know. There is this this like mini fridge situation that plugs into the bus and it's pretty small it's probably enough to carry like half and half and some cheese sticks but it's not going to fit any significant amount of food in there so i don't know if we should get more of a powered cooler that'll keep things more refrigerated i would love to hear what you guys do if you have an rv or a bus or something like that a van um, what you do for refrigeration or if you just do coolers 
the stairwells in the middle of a project, just putting down some carpeting on the stairs to catch more dirt before it enters. And, and this is just, again, peel and stick wallpaper that we put on the sides. Something else that I need to get comfortable with before being able to travel is solar. So this bus has batteries, it's got four marine batteries in it. It's got a solar panel. I don't know how many watts on the, on the roof and It'll last a little while, but I've tended to go to campgrounds that have power because again, solar is something I don't fully understand. I don't know how long it would last and I don't want to depend on it and then have it run out and not have it. It charges up pretty quickly. It's at 100% right now because we've got a beautiful sunny day and uh, I've never really pushed it to its limits to see what we could run on solar and what we could not. Basically, the only thing we have for electricity kind of plugged in regularly is sink. The pump for the sink would use power. The ceiling fan that actually moves air better than I thought it would plugged it in and that's probably the thing we use most regularly. Obviously, if we changed up the heating cooling situation, that would take a lot of power and I don't know that the solar would be able to run that, but we'll see. So I'm not someone that likes to camp when it's super hot out. I, I tend to plan our trips like spring and fall when we haven't really needed anything and we can use the fresh air. We've got like a screen door, magnetic screen door that I can put and open up the doors, but I want to get something for the bus windows. These are super like old fashioned when I was going to school in second grade windows. So it takes a little muscle to get them up and down, but they work phenomenally. There's no leaks, they are tinted, and then the bottom half of them is blacked out for privacy. These shelves up here are great for storage. They're up out of the way and they don't take any of the ceiling height. Like I'm six foot tall, I can stand up straight and not touch the ceiling in this bus. The space up top is great for tucking things away. It's, there's a little bit of a lift on it, but it's not the best for when you're driving. So I don't store a ton up there all of the time, but between that shelving and this under cabinet shelving, it's been enough for short trips. We haven't really had a problem. I've got this little cubby hole here that that we usually just like shove towels in. this is a hammock on the top towels in the bottom is a little portable vacuum and then in these cabinets underneath the sink is basically the gray water tank so not much going on under there that bucket and um, hosing back there is so that you could, could technically hook it up to the sink and put it out the window and then have an outdoor shower and then in this other kitchen cabinet, we've got um, a Blackstone griddle basket with like toilet paper, paper towels, extra little bits and bobs, a little bit of um, cookware, things like that, propane tanks. And then in this drawer is our silverware and everything else we could possibly need. So games, some there's knives, that kind of stuff, manuals for using the things that are installed here. And then this area right behind the driver's seat is where we keep tray tables in case we wanted to eat in here. Usually we're eating outside at campsites, but if it was raining and we needed a surface to eat on, we've got the tray tables as an option. This is our mat that I put out in front of the bus when we're camping to kind of collect hopefully some of the dirt and mud before we get onto the bus. And there's also a first aid kit back here. I refilled the original first aid kit from the bus that was kind of like crusty old gloves and expired medication and refill that with our stuff, but left it in its original space. And then again, where this mini fridge is, is just sort of wasted space right now. It's just another place that stuff gets shoved. We've got a screen that goes across the windshield so that when we're camping, we have some more privacy and it keeps out some of the sunlight. There's also the curtain that can cover and give us privacy on the, the front opening door, dog leash and dog run and dog bowls for when we drag them along with us. And of course the mini fridge whose fate has not been decided yet. This lamp is again one of those things that I created when I was just like trying to make things pretty and decorate the bus and it's super not practical <laughs> but I love it. It doesn't put out much light it's got this little candle but it's adorable and we wanted to go for like a, a cottage core witchy Hagrid vibe so it fit the vibe with having the little creatures there and honestly I, I I made these curtains. I don't know how to sew, but somehow we hacked them together. They're light blocking shades and they've got just this lace overlay over them to try to make them a little more pretty. And we open those up when I'm driving because believe it or not, you can see from the rear view 
through the back. All right, so if you've made it through all of that, thank you for coming on our tour of the bus. Uh, I will give you an, a tour of the outside sometime, maybe if we watch it ever, and learn a little bit more about what is involved with the solar and everything like that. But I think that some education is in order for myself to get comfortable and more confident using this. And it's a great challenge because part of the reason that this channel exists is to help moms feel more comfortable traveling with their kids. And I'm just gonna walk the walk. <laughs> and see how it goes. So what do you think? Should we sell the bus or should we go on an epic road trip adventure across the USA and see how it goes? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you have any suggestions that would be helpful to using the space on the bus or resources on how to learn about how solar works and things like that, that would be great. I've watched plenty of YouTube videos about small bus living, but haven't come across that kind of stuff yet. So I'd love to hear it. And thank you so much for tuning in. I'm sure we'll bring you more from the bus in the future.